Hi everybody, it's me Jill and welcome to Jill Informed. This is the recap of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Season 9, Episode 24, The Reunion, Part 3. Okay, this is the conclusion, the end of the end of Season 9. A very controversial season. I know we have very distinct camps of people. Team Lisa Vanderpump, team everybody else, and you've all been very vocal in your respective camps and I love it. <laughs> I love hearing from both sides. As those of you who have been watching me this whole season know, I am very undecided about this. Part of the reason is that I don't follow the story very much outside of what Bravo shows us on the show. So my opinions are based on just what was aired this season for the most part. I know a lot of you have more information because you've seen a tweet that Lisa Vanderpump sent or you know the backstory because you did some research on whatever. So I totally understand why you believe what you believe. You know, you might have more information than I do. But from what I've just seen on the show, there has not been a definitive gotcha moment. And because of that, for me, I'm very reluctant to say she's guilty. However, I do know Lisa Vanderpump's personality from watching her for nine seasons. And she's completely capable of doing something like that. They all are. That's why we love them. That's why they're housewives. Anyway, I needed to get my rant in right off the start because I won't have another chance. I'm going to be watching as I recap. Let's get started. Okay, as usual, we are picking up right where we left off, kind of replaying the very end of part two, which was when Andy asked Denise, so what were you thinking when you went to that lunch where Camille trashed everybody? The camera cuts over to Camille and she's like, this is truly a setup. It's truly a setup. It is. And she gets up and leaves and she's trying to yank her microphone out and unzipping her dress. And she goes into the dressing room. That was where we left at the end of part two. So now we pick up and everyone's like, what? what is going on? What just happened? Andy gets up to go after her and he goes, what is the setup? I'm sure he's trying to figure out why she's saying this was a setup because... Andy doesn't want to be accused of that. Okay, so Andy confronts her in the hallway. Poor Camille is still trying to like just hold her dress on. He goes, what's the setup? And she goes, she did say she cursed at her kids. She did. We get the flashback yet again and she said she screamed at her kids. She didn't say she cursed at her kids. And Andy goes, well, okay, so what? So what's wrong? And she goes, and they're, they're making me look like a really bad person. And, and, and she told me to tell my daughter that she was lying about the things, that, about something. And oh, I feel bad. Why do I feel bad for Camille? <laughs> but I do because I think she's kind of losing it. There's only so much a person can take. But she is wrong. That's the thing. Denise did not say she cursed at her kids and she did not tell you to tell your daughter that she was lying about the things. Which that in and of itself is way different than what she accused her of when she was sitting out there on the couch. When she was out there on the couch, she said, Denise told me to tell my daughter she was a fucking liar. I mean, that is a sh very shocking thing to say. You know, either Camille was starting to lose it already or Camille knew exactly what she was doing and that that would make a very tasty sound bite. I still feel kind of bad for her though. Oh my God, Bravo, you tricked us. <laughs> I hate when they do that. Okay, they teased that Erica was going after Denise because all we saw was the clip of Erica going, Denise, stop it. Stop it. That is not true. So of course they wanted us to go, ooh, what's going on with Erica and Denise? Now, I should have known that they were trying to create drama where there was none. While Andy is backstage with Camille, the other ladies are still sitting on the couches talking amongst themselves. And Denise goes, I never told her to tell her daughter she was a liar. 
And everyone's like, no, no. And that's when Erica said, Denise, stop. That's not true. She was defending Denise. Thanks, bravo. Andy's still having this conversation with Camille backstage. And she goes, Andy, they were so mean about my wedding. And he goes, no, no, they weren't. And she goes, they said the best part of my wedding was leaving it. And he goes, no. Then we get a flashback to, this must have been one of those after shows where certain groups of ladies will sit and talk to the camera. Anyway, this was with Teddy and Kyle. And Kyle said, what do you think was the best part of Camille's wedding? And Teddy goes, hmm the departure <laughs> and they laughed their heads off so um eh, point for camille there okay we are still getting this back and forth of andy and camille backstage and all the other ladies on stage and they're being like just super catty like lisa ren is going i've never had anyone not in want me at their wedding before ouch <laughs> stuff like that Meanwhile, Camille is crying to Andy, saying, they're so mean, isn't that mean? And he goes, well, yeah, yes, that's mean. And they just want me to get on that bandwagon of going after Lisa Vanderpump. And yes, Lisa has done some stuff to me in the past. I can understand that. But she's also been very, very kind to me. And I miss Lisa. And why is that not okay? And Andy goes, it is okay. Why was that so bad that I said something nice about her? They all just want me, me to hate her. And he's like, it, there's nothing wrong with that. Backstage, Andy says to Camille, you know, I think if you were just consistent and said, I like Lisa Vanderpump, she's my friend. I'm sorry, that's not going to change. And you were consistent about it the whole time. I think they would have been fine with that. I think it was you telling them one thing to their face and then something else behind their back. And she goes, but they all do it. They all do it. And he goes, I know, but I just, I think if your opinion was consistent. And she's like, mm-hmm. I can't understand why Denise doesn't like me. And he goes, well, I don't know, but you did just say that you don't like her and that she's boring. So... <laughs> Camille, well, she is kind of a wah, wah this year. <laughs> okay, you're talking behind her back now. I don't disagree that they all do it. They all do it. But she has to recognize that she does it too. Okay, so, you know, the ladies are like, wow, she's so angry. I didn't realize she was that angry. And then we cut back to Andy and he said to her, listen, let's just take this like moment by moment let's just take it one thing at a time and see if we can't get through this and she goes okay now back out on the stage i hear the ladies go oh andy's coming back andy's coming back now so he does go out there and he's kind of giving them the lowdown on what was bothering her and he tells them that she's coming back out oh and also she is upset that you kind of trashed her wedding on the after shows teddy's like yeah i did i said that but after she said she hated me so I don't know, you know, what came first, the chicken or the egg? I think if somebody that you despise says something bad about you, you can't get bent out of shape about it. It's not a friend saying it, it's somebody that you don't like. And Camille does not like Teddy. You have to understand that Teddy won't like you back. Okay, I'm just gonna narrate. I'm just gonna show you a video and narrate this part where Camille comes back to the stage because it is so awkward. She's sniffling. And she sits back down and we just get these close-ups of every woman. Andy's like, thanks for coming back. Everyone's just staring and quiet and she's staring and quiet. And then finally, Rena goes, I'm glad you're back. But woo, <laughs> the look on everybody else's face is not quite as welcoming. Okay. Camille said, it's just, it's very hard for me. Andy asked, what's hard? And she said, just being here with these ladies because I thought they had a good time at my wedding and it broke my heart to hear Teddy say that the best part was the departure and I thought everyone had a good time. And Teddy said, we did have a good time. Your wedding was beautiful and congratulations. And we had a lot of fun, but we were just being shady because we had just heard all the stuff you were saying about us behind our back and we were just getting back at you. And she's like, okay. And Teddy said, like, I thought 
we were okay at the camping trip after that scuffle we got into. You stayed in my room. And Camille said, well, we only had problems during that one small part of it. And Teddy said, well, yeah, that's what I thought, but it didn't stop. You kept talking about it. And we see a flashback to like Camille's confessionals. And then when Camille was telling her friend Kimber about Teddy and she really did kind of go on about Teddy. And I think because she knew she did, she got defensive. And her answer was, well, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't remember every single thing. My life has been very dense this past few months. So excuse me if I can't remember every single thing. Okay. Yes, uh, she's been through a lot. The wedding, the fire, d the death of someone very close to her, losing her home, rebuilding another home. It just, that would put anybody on edge. And I do understand that. But don't use that as an excuse for all the shady things that you said about Teddy during the season. To me, the only thing she really should have said in this moment is just, I'm sorry. We move on to Camille bringing up Dorit and PK's financial issues. Andy goes on to, Camille, you made some serious claims about Dorit's financial status after the Kitson event, but you said you were protecting her. How are you protecting her? And she said, I didn't want to get into it. And Dorit goes, but you did. Camille apologizes for that, I think pretty sincerely. She said, I knew as soon as I said it, it was irresponsible, I shouldn't have done it, and it was mean, and I knew the moment I said it that I shouldn't have, and I'm sorry. And Dorit said, even if we end up friends after this, I am always now going to be in the shadow of doubt, thinking, I don't know if what she's telling me is real. I don't think you can blame all of that on Camille, though. I think I would always have what you say in the shadow of doubt category. And I still love you. Well, I can see why Andy wanted her to come back because Camille is getting grilled question after question here. What is it that you don't like about Denise? And she said, well, I didn't like what she told me to tell my daughter. And everyone's kind of rolling their eyes. And Denise said, I was trying to tell you to tell her that Teddy would never do something like that and you know that maybe she was mistaken so that everybody would feel better and she said yeah i i remember you t saying that part but i remember something else too i don't know what else she remembers but it wasn't caught on camera that's all i know denise ended up saying well i can't imagine i would ever say anything like that but if i did i'm sorry and then we move on to the brett kavanaugh comment oh good okay camille starts crying and said, I just, I think that people need to get their voices out and that, and that people need to be heard. Okay, but not Dr. Ford. We don't need her to be heard. Just Brett Kavanaugh? Like, okay. I don't want to get into that. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Andy asks her about the fire, and I guess she was able to salvage some stuff, like baby pictures of the kids and stuff like that. So, you know, sentimental stuff, that's all she needs. Somebody that has the kind of money that she has, it's all about those irreplaceable sentimental things. I remember thinking this last season when Kyle got robbed, all her purses and stuff were gone. I was thinking, all of it, it's all all replaceable for these people and pretty painlessly to be honest right except for when she said that some of those handbags had been passed down to her they were her mom's and the jewelry from her mom that's what kills me doesn't matter how rich you are that's the kind of stuff that they can't get it back and I, I just feel for her then we see the clip again of her walking through her house and the devastation and we cut back now to all the ladies and she's crying and you know everyone's tearing up and and they're feeling for her and then she talks about scott her assistant slash friend i don't assistant of many years so maybe it was like a friend and she said that was the hardest part was losing scott and andy said i was struck by how you said that losing scott was worse than losing your house what andy She's like, yes, it was worse. Yeah, of course it was. 
That's a human being. Sometimes Andy's questions are just bonkers. So now we do talk about Denise and she said that they just, she was just concerned about getting her kids and the dogs out because the fire was moving so fast that it was like grab everything and go. She probably lost as much as Camille did in terms of like everything inside had so much smoke damage that it really couldn't be salvaged. Andy said, Camille, you said that Denise doesn't know what you're going through because her rented house didn't burn down. Then he goes, Denise, what are your thoughts on that? There you go, Andy. <laughs> Denise just said, you know, who thinks that way? We talked so many times, Camille, after that happened. I was very empathetic to you. We were on the phone all the time. We talked about what was happening for both of us and who cares if it was a rented house I've rented two homes before when I saw that I was like where is this coming from Have, did I do something to her okay this is just so weird Camille's response is mm-hmm mm, yeah and she goes well I mean you said it I did yeah why why did you say that I'm sorry I I don't have any answer for you I'm sorry mm -hmm. I have never heard anyone answer like that it wasn't an apology. It was just, I have no answer for you. So are you saying you don't know yourself why you acted that way? Or you just don't in the moment want to say, it's because I just don't like you, Denise. I don't know why. Something about you I don't like. And maybe that's the truth. I don't know, but it's, it's very interesting. And everybody looks a little perplexed. Denise's response is, this is where we think before we speak, Camille. You say really hurtful things about us, and sometimes there is absolutely no truth to what you're saying whatsoever. But you just talk out of your ass. Camille just doesn't, she starts crying again. She talks about how overwhelming her year was. You know, it reminds me of Bethany. Bethany had a really, really rough year too. Her mom is sick and her family's been displaced. She doesn't have a home. She, it, she's overwhelmed. Rinna, oh. You need a hug. So Rinna gets up to walk over to sit and hug her. All of that stuff is true, but just like, just once I would like one of these housewives to say, I have had the worst year ever and I feel so incredibly overwhelmed. I can't believe it. But what I did and said was wrong. I shouldn't have and I'm sorry. You can do both things. You can remind everybody that you aren't quite in your right mind because of everything that's been piled on and you, the stress level is through the roof. But you can also be accountable for like saying crappy things because honestly, I think we all know you would have said it even without all that stress. Okay, now we're lightening things up with a fun little segment about their traveling. And it's kind of this like old timey instructional video, like these are tips on housewives travel. Always travel with a budget. Then you see them on that private plane to the Bahamas and everything's lush and extravagant. Tip number two, always pack light and of course we see all the trunk loads of stuff that they bring on a weekend <laughs> oh then we get a viewer comment to kyle saying kyle postmating that rolex to the table that is like the level of diva i aspire to then andy asked her do you always have to check with mauricio before you buy things and she said, well, I mean, big purchases, I like to ask him first and I like him to do the same. I do too. How about you guys? Do you make big purchases without consulting your spouse or partner? Like they said over 10,000. Well, that's ridiculously big to me. I don't think I would buy anything over a few hundred dollars without telling my husband, you know, unless it was a gift for him. Then they asked Erica and she said, well, I'm not allowed to buy jewelry. Tom likes to buy that for me. And you know, I think I have some nice pieces. Rin is like very nice. And she said, but you know, I mean like, I don't think I would buy a car without telling him. <laughs> a car. <laughs> I'm sorry. Listen, everybody's different, but like I am just right now imagining just going out and buying a car and not telling my husband, like, what would that look like? <laughs> it's funny. I don't know. They're still keeping it lighthearted. They're talking about Kyle. Kyle says that that was the drunkest she's ever been when they were in Provence and her and Teddy got 
wasted. All right. Well, the fun is over when we come back from the break because now we are talking about Lisa Vanderpump, basically. We're talking about Lucy Lucy Apple Juice. We're talking about the Radar Online story. We see a flashback to when Kyle went over to Lisa's house and Lisa said she swore on her children's life and Jiggy's life that she did not give that story. And we even see Lisa taking the lie detector test. So then he goes to a viewer who said, as an attorney, you should know that polygraphs are only 70% accurate and they are inadmissible in court. Erica, has Tom weighed in on this topic? And she said he says the same thing. They're highly unreliable, but it can be good if you get the right person to do it. So Denise said, I want to know how she found the lie detector. How she found a lie detector person? Like, I would think that would be easy. And not that I've ever tried to find one on my own, but it seems like you could just Google it, right? I don't know. Anyway, um, Kyle goes, I want to tell a little story about that because, Andy, I know even you had your doubts. And he said, I had my doubts about how you found out. I was thinking, okay, can you swear that someone from production didn't tell you this? And she's like, no, listen, let me tell you the story. It's kind of, she told this story already in Hawaii, I think. It was a friend of her daughter's. Her family, their house was burglarized. Like in Kyle's robbery, the detectives had the work workers go down and take a lie detector test. That friend, her family was having construction work done on the house at the time. So those workers had to go down and take lie detector tests. Andy goes, well, if you don't believe in the accuracy of lie detector tests, why have them do it? And she goes, I didn't want them to. The detective had them go down and do it. In fact, somebody that works for me failed that test and I know she didn't do it. Do you? And she said, and I got that text that, hey, someone from your show is down here taking a lie detector test. And that was before production even knew because it was a practice run. According to Kyle, oh, well, all the ladies know so much about lie detector tests now. And he said, okay, so then what we saw on the show was her second time taking it. And she's like, yes. And Erica goes, yeah. And uh, with the blood pressure cuff over a jacket. And then Dorit said, and you're supposed to be sitting for 60 to 90 minutes beforehand. So boy, they have all done some research, haven't they? Andy goes, well, then why do you think she did a trial run? Like he doesn't know what they're going to say course they all chime in with the same thing to make sure she was gonna pass before she went on the air she wanted to make sure she was gonna pass that test okay so now Andy said you know the boss at Radar Online said that Lisa Vanderpump was not the source of that article nor has she ever been the source of any anonymous article what do you make of that they all think it was just said because Lisa Vanderpump has a relationship with him. You know, I think it was one of you guys even in the comments that said you didn't think that he would call out anybody because those online rags like that are dependent on their sources. So if you're going to now start calling people out who give you anonymous tips, how many more do you think you're going to get? And I'm not saying she did it. I'm just saying that doesn't really make sense. Whether she did or didn't, there's no advantage to the owner of Radar Online to tell. In fact, it would be to his disadvantage to tell. That would even have a chain effect of making other people not ever want to give him an anonymous tip because he's not going to honor their anonymity. And he asked Camille then, do you think that Lisa called Radar Online? And then Denise goes, or someone from the center? And she goes, maybe, maybe that. I, I don't think Lisa would have done it herself. And then Rinna, thank you, Lisa Rinna, of all people. <laughs> but thank you, Lisa Rinna, for saying what I'm sure all of us are thinking. Lisa Vanderpump isn't going to pick up the phone and call anybody. She's too busy and she's too smart. 
Come on. If she wants a story out there, she's got people all around her to do stuff for her. So all of them said, none of us think that Lisa Vanderpump herself called and gave that story. But Rinna goes, that's how she does things. Think of all the articles that are out there on Radar Online, Daily Mail, and Page Six. That's how she communicates. How about this article about her announcing that she's not coming here to the reunion and that she's quitting the show? Wouldn't you rather that she talked to you and Andy goes yeah I would have rather that she called me about how now Andy brings up that Lisa Vanderpump has called you the bitches of Beverly Hills and a stupid cow (laughs) and she's compared you to pigs and she said that Dorit had a head transplant And then Kyle makes a pretty good point. She said, how come that didn't get picked up on the lie detector? I guess we'd have to ask Dorit. (laughs) And then Rinna goes, let alone what she said about Erica. And as you guys know, that bothered me. Listen, I know it was a joke, but what bothered me was that the joke, it felt creepy. It felt like it was at the expense of either the trans community or the drag community. I, I'm not sure. Again, I know it was just a joke. I thought that one was on the edge for me. Anyway, if you recall, it was just don't ask me if Erica's tucking it under or something like that because there's just some things I can't lie about. <laughs> Then Andy mentions that it has actually been a very tough year for Lisa Vanderpump and that her brother committed suicide. The ladies all said that they have empathy for that. In the beginning, when she was filming with them, they were empathetic. Even if they hate her or whatever you want to say, I don't think it goes that far. Kyle said, you know, I mean, you'd have to be like not a human to not have empathy for somebody going through something like that. And Andy said that, you know, she said she is not watching this season at all and that she is letting people tell her what's happening. And then Rena goes, why would you do that? (laughs) And it occurred to me, that's kind of like what some of you guys are doing. You are not watching the season at all. You're letting me tell you what's happening. (laughs) Okay, next we get a super long montage of the evolution of the relationship between Kyle Richards and Lisa Vanderpump. I'm glad they showed it because it was interesting how you could see the deterioration long before this Lucy Lucy apple juice thing. It helps me to understand why it broke down so much because I kept thinking this is so weird that this is the straw that broke the camel's back for Kyle and Lisa because it didn't really even involve Kyle and Lisa. I mean it involved Lisa but it didn't involve Kyle at all and I thought this is so weird weird that Kyle's just taking everybody else's opinion about what happened and she's running with it and she is losing this longtime relationship that she had with Lisa over something that was like Dorit's fault. I was kind of losing sight of what really happened but this montage makes it clear that this was a long time coming I think. So when and when it's over Andy asks her you know so what do you think of that and she's like it's sad and she's starts you know tearing up she said I keep thinking to myself like what if I didn't tell the truth and I didn't go to her house that day you know like how would that have played out then if she would have just found out that all the ladies were talking about her at that lunch and you know that wouldn't have meant good either she said she thinks about how Lisa must feel right now how she's feeling that day knowing that all of them are there and she isn't. She said, sure, she's feeling bad too. She's crying pretty hard right now. And it's making Camille tear up and everybody's looking on sympathetically. Oh my God, you guys, okay. Ken's farewell to Kyle went viral in the form of a hashtag goodbye Kyle challenge. We start by seeing Harry Hamlin's version. Goodbye, Kyle! Lisa Renna's mom did it. Chris Jenner did it. The morally corrupt Faye Resnick did it. So then Andy said, what was the intention behind that? <laughs> Kyle said, okay, so the trolls on Twitter were saying, you're this and you're that. Hashtag goodbye, Kyle, meaning they want me out of there. 
So instead of just sitting down and taking it, I decided to make a joke out of it. So when we were out one night and we walked past Sir, I started joking with my friends saying it. And then we got the Uber driver to say, Goodbye, Kyle. And then everybody started doing it. And she said, and this is another example of Lisa trying to make me look bad by showing how wounded she is because my sister Kathy went to her house. She said that Ken was joking about it to her and saying, Goodbye, Kathy. And they were laughing. So she wasn't hurt by it. She also thought it was funny. Anyway, she said, listen, Lisa has a lot of great qualities about her. And that's one side of her that I didn't like. But you take the good with the bad with your friends. And I did. That was something about her I accepted. Dorit's like, yeah, me too. It's time to say goodbye to Camille now. He asked her if she had any parting words. And she's like, well, just that I'm... Very emotional right now. This was a, a lot. Again, if I hurt you, I'm sorry. I think she must be saying this to Dorit because boy, Denise is, is not having Camille. Let's just put it that way. And she said, Kyle, I love you. I just do. And Kyle's like, oh. Kyle gives her a hug and then she's, you know, walking off again, reaching back, man. She cannot wait to get that mic off or the dress. I don't know. One or the other is very uncomfortable for her. So now we are back with the final moments with all the housewives. And he asks Denise, since she's the newbie, what is the biggest revelation she's had being a housewife? And she said, honestly, the genuine friendships that I have developed with each one of these women. And I, honestly, I know that they would be there for me and I would be there for them. Oh, sweetie, you are a newbie. <laughs> Wait till your sophomore season. That's when things get interesting. <laughs> Ask Teddy. Then he asks Erica about when Kyle and Teddy said that she wasn't really invested in the group or didn't like them or whatever. He said, you said that you were closer to them than you've ever been with a group of women in your life. He said, do you think you've changed? And she said, I think we all have changed. Then he moves on to Dorit. Some of your friendships were really challenged this year, Dorit. Do you feel secure in your place with the group now? And she said, I really do. This group. Just to be clear, I'm not talking about Camille and Lisa. Then he says, Teddy, do you still feel like you need to be the moral compass of everyone? And she said, you know, looking back, I think I have some great friendships in this group. I thought she was going to say, looking back, I realized I really need to keep my mouth shut more. But no. She did say that she learned a lot about herself and it was a good wake up call for her. Then he moves on to Lisa Rinna and he goes, last year you said we saw the nicest version of Lisa Rinna that anyone would ever see. What do you call this version we saw this year? And she goes, oh gosh, I mean, what would you guys call it? And Andy goes, well, I would say you're just an asshole with iconic hair and lips. Anyway, Lisa thought that she was very forthcoming this year. Kyle, well, this season is certainly going to be remembered as the one that ended your long friendship with Lisa Vanderpump. Thanks, Andy. How else would you like this season to be remembered? She said, well, I get asked, like, how are you doing this for so many years? But we really have a lot of fun together. We've all bonded so much and opened up more than we ever have with each other. I have laughed so much this season and I just, I really enjoy these women. You know, I'm starting to think you guys are right. We're, we're going to have to shake the cast up because we can't have this big kumbaya thing all season long, right? There's got to be an antagonist in the group. It'll happen amongst these women, I know, but they're all so buddy-buddy. We all love each other. That's why we need Nicolette Sheridan. I'm still pushing for her. So finally, Andy said, can I open that birthday present? And she's like, oh, fine, but you're going to have to put the bow back on so I can mail it. So he opens it. And it's like I said, it's from Manolo Blahnik, but it's not like shoebox size. It's little. And he opens it and he goes, oh my God, it's such a Lisa present. It's a pink belt. And Dorit goes, maybe after seeing it, she'll call you. And Andy goes, yeah, I, I feel like I've seen this on her. They're like, you just want it for the clubhouse. <laughs> They've got tequila shots. And he said, you know, it's well-deserved because you all were such troopers, you know, showing up today. He is really mad that Lisa didn't show up. 
Oh my God. Now he's asking, does someone want to lead us in a toast? And I'm getting ready for the serenity prayer. God grant us the serenity. Oh, maybe the serenity prayer would have been better. Kyle said, well, this is just to friendships, to honesty in, in our friendships and for being there for one another and just for friendships and that we're friends and that we're all we're all friends here for each other and to to, to friendship <laughs> something like that i love you i love you yes you and i i love all of you all of you really that is a wrap on season nine i don't know i don't think there's plans for a real big shakeup of the cast but they are replacing Lisa. Hopefully, whoever that is, Nicolette Sheridan, please, is gonna bring some excitement. I can't spend all next season talking about PK's diabetes. And a big thank you to all you guys for hanging in there. I hope you know how much I appreciate you guys. Keep the feedback coming. I love to hear what you think. As always, if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to Jill Informed. And don't forget, next week, Real Housewives of Orange County season 14 begins. The show that started them all, Orange County, is back. And Vicki Gunvalson is just a friend of. Mm-hmm. And there's a new housewife. I'm excited to find out what's going to happen there. I'll be here next week to recap that. Hope you guys join me. Until next time, bye-bye. Mm -hmm.